Welcome to Beyond the 90. Um, we've got Alex and Neil with me. You okay, Neil? I'm all right, mate. Not too happy after the defeat, but could be better. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I think we're third, so it's not the end of the world, is it? Um, Alex, you okay? Could be better. Could be better. Game was a little disappointing, but, you know, watching uh, the rest of the games yesterday brought me a little bit more happiness, so things can okay. make you happy. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get straight into yesterday's game. We'll do a quick review of that. Um, Alex, what were your views on the game? Lackluster. Um, so, speaking from North America, I got up at 7 a.m. I know people that woke up at 4 a.m. and, you know, were all ready to cheer on the team. And um, definitely, I think I tweeted out about halfway through the game being like, this is what I woke up at 7 a.m. to watch. Um, they look flat. They look lost. They just weren't ready to play. Uh, and West Ham really uh, took advantage of every single chance they had. And it was an easy win for them, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think we had a discussion during the game about uh, Johnny Evans um, was declared fit, but he just wasn't running. He just did not look fit to me at all. Um, I don't know how he was declared fit, because he just didn't seem to want to run. Um, even, I think, their third goal, he could have closed them down, but he just stood back off them. Just didn't sound, seem like the normal Johnny Evans we used to. Um, and, and I think to me, that was a huge loss for us, him not being anywhere near 100%. And I agree with you on that. Um, I think it was, I think we were talking about it in the first 20 minutes when we started noticing that he wasn't fit and didn't appear ready at all. Um, and most of the, uh, the defense would just seemed like they were lacking and they weren't really ready to play and they seem lost and when Evans isn't fully fit so Yunsu tends to make more errors and it was very clear to see yesterday uh the amount of errors that were caused by our defense just just on the back of that I didn't manage to watch the game just for everybody's knowledge but this is something that's been recurring though uh, last year we brought back in Diddy he wasn't quite fit we brought him back too early he ended up going injured again uh we've done it a little bit with Vardy as well and so this is a com- this is a kind of common recurrence now. Is this a Brendan Rodgers thing that he kind of rushes players back even when they're not fit? I'm not sure. Obviously, the physio's left, um, and, and and that could be part of it. Um, but he does seem to be rushing players back, which is a bit of a worrying thing. Um, rushing players back for important games that we may need points in, but then it seems to backfire on us because then they're out for twelve weeks and and ten weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Vardy last week, he's got a hip injury that he's playing with. How long before that flares up again? Well, he was in his post-match interview, he goes, it's a little groin thing, because I'll be fine afterwards. So I think himself, he knows that it's just something that pulls occasionally and it's not going to snap or anything. It's not like the Indiddy situation. So maybe it, it, it is a hip injury, but I think he was fine to play. I think... The, the only issue with that is that, you know, if Vardy says, well, it's only a little hip issue, you know, when's a little hip issue turn into a big hip issue? You know, could it be while he's, you know, training during the week or could it be during a game where he's sprinting down with the ball and there goes his hip, you know? So there's that point of, you know, that you brought up about rushing players back and, you know, we're already uh, lacking depth already. And, you know, if we're rushing players back already and when they're not fit enough and they injure themselves, there's just another player on the injured list and with our depth already struggling, just causes more problems. Yeah, I think you're right. I think um, yesterday's game, good to see Under come on. It seemed to play right. Um, did an embarrassing dive. But apart from that, his passing looked quite good. He looked quite on the ball. Um him and Barnes were quite often switching sides, which I thought was good to see. Um, so their defence didn't know what was coming. So I thought that was really good. Um, so for me, Evans looked injured. Um, Tillemans, without that protection in that midfield, um, he wasn't passing right. He just didn't look right either. Um, and I think it's because he didn't have that protection. So the week before, Pratt was caught, was having that protection and helping him out. But he didn't seem to have that protection because West Ham's midfield were just overrunning our midfield completely. Could that a position potentially with the defensive cover that Hamza Chowdhury could protect? Because I know he's not the exact replacement for Pratt, but at the same time, he, one thing he gives you is he gives that pen, that the energy and that pace and that just get off the ball kind of mentality. A little bit's been 
pushed out of his game. But I thought surely when you, I remember when you guys were commenting on the time, I was thinking, well, this would be a time for Chowdhury to kind of come in and kind of not quite boss the midfield, but to have that presence and that body in there that you know can clean up. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he would, he would have been ideal. Um, he might not have started the game, but when you see that their midfield was running as ragged, you'd have put him in there for a bit of protection. Yes, he came on, but very, very late and couldn't really do much with the game. Um, so for me, that's probably a substitution I'd have bought on a lot earlier. Yeah, that uh, that substitution just kind of seemed pointless to me. Game was already lost. Uh, game was over, in my opinion. And that was just to get a couple minutes for a chattery to get on the field. Simple as that. There was really no need for it at that time of the game. No, I think you're right. I think international break now, we've got two weeks off. Um, that means we can maybe get some players fit again. I know some of them on the verge are coming back, so maybe we can get a full fit team ready for Villa um, in two weeks' time, which I'm looking forward to. And it looks like you might have to get up early again, doesn't it, Alex? Well, I'll get the coffee ready. ready and, you know, <laughs> hopefully we actually show up, especially with how Villa's been playing, so... I think we need to, one thing we need to mention is that Harvey Barnes has got into the England squad, which I was actually quite surprised at because I think we were talking about before on the show, you've got obviously so many wingers and that's probably one of the positions where England is super strong. That and now with the performance of Ings, um, Calvert-Lewin and stuff, his striker as well. So I'm, I'm really happy to see Barnes back in the team as well, or for, for the first time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think it's a great thing. I think, as you said, they've got a lot of wingers. I can't really see him playing. Um, but it's great to be called up. And if he doesn't play, that's probably better for us that he doesn't get injured, doesn't get clattered by someone. Because um, we all know what them Wales defenders are like. And that will probably clatter into someone. Let's hope it's not Barnes. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's Thursday. Um, Maguire and Gomez in defence. Yes, they shipped how many goals? 13 between the two of them. Um, Gareth Bale must be pissing himself. A fridge and a young boy. That's what we've got in defence. Exactly. Never mind. Right, let's move on. Transfer deadline day as we're recording this. Um, been some ins and outs throughout the season, uh, throughout the transfer window. Um, Chelsea did all theirs early on, so they're all resting. Um, so I thought we'd go through the ins one at a time, see what you guys thought to them. So let's start off with the last one in. Wesley Fafona, St Etienne, around 30 million. Neil, your views on him? He's, he's what... I, I'm... I'm torn between this one out of the three I think this is probably the weakest not just because of the player but because of the capacity because the French league isn't the same it's not the same uh, uh, mentality it's not the same um, playing ability and also there just seems to be a little bit of he's only paid 30 games yes he could be an absolute brilliant player we've got the right manager to train him up to the next level but he's having to come in and not really had any time to adapt so before when we had Morgan and we had Maguire, we had Sion Chu as the understudy. It looks like Rogers' formation will be the 3 5 2, three, five, two or three, 5 at the back. So, with that in mind, with um, Amartya going to have to throw him straight in, and for the 100k that he's on and for the 30 mil, it's a lot of money and a lot of pressure on him. Hopefully, he can live up to it. I'm hoping for the best, but it, it's, it wasn't the transfer I think we needed, but I think it's the one that Brendan Rogers had his eye on the most. Alex, your views on him? So, for myself personally, I was hoping for uh, Leicester to sign Fofana. I um, was slightly skeptical uh, at the same time, um, especially with all the social media and chaos he seemed to have been causing over the last month or so. Um, so, I am trying to keep a level head with this one. Um, I think at his age, He's a perfect fit for a development for a player under the coaching scheme of Rogers. Uh, however, at a 35 plus 5 million uh, add on, that's pretty, that's a quite a large amount of money for a 19 year old. Um, also, I do have worried with is this just a stepping stone for him? Um, James, I think we've discussed this um, where, you know, is he just using this in a way for him to get his feet wet in the Premier League? And once he's developed enough, he can jump ship. Um, now, if that's the case, then, you know, we might be able to sell him for a, for a high, um, high, uh, high price. But 
I think my biggest issue right now is that um, I'm trying to look at to see what he can deliver now rather than looking at the future. So at his age, I, I'm skeptical to say the least, even though I've been very for this move for about a month now. Okay. Um, I, I think I understand what you're saying there. Um, I, th I think I'm in kind of two minds with him. I think he's a great prospect, but he's going to, he's 19 years old. He's going to make mistakes. He's not got Premier League experience. Um, yesterday when I saw Evans didn't look fit, the thing kind of thing going from my head was if that was soon to and for phone at the back, I'd be really worried because the two of them have got so many mistakes in them. Um, I think he'll be a good player um, under Rogers. It might take time. The money is on. I'm not sure the fans will give him that amount of time because if he's spending 30 million on defender, he needs to come in and start performing straight away. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. One thing I'd like to see from him, and, and Neil brings this up many a time uh, in the last season, is that we used to have Maguire used to be that target man at, at corners. Um, and I'm hoping that he is that man. Because at corners, yes, all right, at corners, if we can get it past the first man, which we seem to not be able to do, when we get it past the first man, if we've got that target man, such as Elliot and Walsh used to do, they used to score quite a few goals. And you see defenders all the time scoring. John Terry was a great one for it. If we can get someone like that from Fafona, who can, who's, who's a target man, who can head a ball in their box, then I think he'll be great. Um, I really, really think he'll be great in a back three with Evans, Siuncu and him, with Evans playing in the centre role to try and help them to out, to help their games on. And I think they will be a formidable three. Um, it just depends how quickly he takes to being in the Premier League because the French League is a lot slower than the Premier League. Um, yeah. And it'll just take him time to adjust. He won't be the finished article, but I think if we give him time and support, he should be okay. But as we have discussed, I, seeing his attitude around, I want to go to Leicester and demanded that he went to Leicester from, from his original club, that to me suggests that this is just going to be a stepping stone for his next kind of big club we're gonna to have to demand that big price tag but there's a reason why we signed one a five-year deal i think as well and everybody kind of gets that now but the reason why is because we know he's got talent for the future and we've got the right manager to get it out of him but again going three at the back the issue is at the moment we've not really got that defensive if you're trying to play three at the back you can't play that game in game out especially with europa league because we've got what with now amati out injured johnny evans just coming back you've got three and one of them's not got zero Premier League experience. Yeah. So that's not looking great for in our, in my opinion, to be honest. Look going forward, but I'm hoping he's going to be the a great player and a great player for us, but not too great that he just sticks himself in the shop window within the first season. Yeah, exactly. So going on to, to the next one, uh, Timothy Castagna, uh, Neil. What were you, what are your views on him after seeing him play a few games? I think it's great. I didn't see the West Ham game, so apparently he was man-marked at that game. So I'm going on the games before that, which was fantastic. I didn't expect him to hit the ground running. Just look at the game against West, Br West Brom. Okay, they're not the best side. But the fact that he got a goal, he was getting in the right positions, he was defensively quite strong against Man City. Really happy with his performance and the way he turned out. And I can't really sing enough praise about him. I think we did post-match commentary, we did loads and loads of stuff about him, but... I'm really excited to see him and Ricardo in the same team because he's looking very, very competitive to Ricardo's level, which we've been lacking for a while. Alex, what do you think to him? Uh, I think uh, it was highway robbery um, for what we got, what we paid to get him. Um, and then you, if you want to compare to what we sold Chilwell for, um, you know, I know they don't play the same position all the time with um, with Castagna come, coming up the wing, but I think it's just it's just highway robbery. Um, the way that he just kind of you know hit the ground running and just produced, and you know last game against West Ham he was marked. You know he could barely get anything going, but you know I think as time goes on, you know I think we'll start seeing more and more as to you know, even more as to why we, we, we bought him. And I think um, for him, I think, I don't even, I don't even know what the limit would be for him here um, because I wasn't expecting much and him coming in, I've been completely blown away by what he's brought. Okay. I think for me, it's been a brilliant signing, 
but we still haven't addressed the left back situation. He doesn't play left. He can play left back, but that's not his regular position. His regular position is where he plays now, and that's the same position as Ricardo. I still believe we need a left footed left back because every and James Justin struggles as well because he's right footed. When he tries to block with his right foot, it's difficult on that wing because it's not. You try and block with your left foot; it's not your strongest foot. So they always try and block with the right foot. And we've had this conversation with Matt Piper before that someone with a left foot is a lot stronger. Um, so I think it's interesting about what do you do when Ricardo comes back? Because I don't believe you can drop Castagna straight away because Ricardo has been out injured for so long. It's going to take him quite a bit to get up to match speed anyway. But what do you do? Because R- Ricardo started his career on the left, left back, didn't he? Yeah, so I think that what you're going to do is you're going to see um, Ricardo go to right back and then Cassano go to left back because at Atalanta he was playing, I think it was 50% of his time on the left and the right. So it, it means that we've got flexibility and the fact that we've got Justin that can play both sides as well means it's really useful for our squad. But I think Justin would be at the three and the one that we dropped. Yeah, I think you're right. Sorry, Alex. I was going to say, you know, I think sometimes we try to pick out the negative to this but i think at the same time you got to look at the positive you know when ricardo comes back we have to start asking questions about where we're going to slot people who because our depth increases once our injuries are you know our injured guys start coming back you know that's that's a conversation that we really seem to not have had for a while now because of what we've been lacking but with the injuries when players start coming back the question really will be start okay who, who starts where where can we slot in somewhere else? You know, it's it's a good it's a good question to ask. Yeah, I think I think you're right. And, and having a quick look at yesterday's game, yes, he was marked out of the game. West Ham had clearly done their homework of what he does. However, I'm going to touch on this now. Perez did nothing to protect him or to help him at all. So generally, the games before, someone has taken defenders away to give him that room to get into the box, to cross it, to get the assist that he does, and even to score the goal that he did. Whereas Perez did nothing yesterday. And I think if you can put someone ahead of him, so I think personally, if you put him in that left wing back slot, Barnes will be perfect with him because the, the two will interchange so well together. Um, it's just, I feel a bit, if we can get on, Under on there, and him and Ricardo on one side, them to on the other side, surely that's formidable. Surely every defence is going to be scared at that. With them, with them four running at you, and then all of a sudden, you've then got to see where Vardy is. Surely that's immense. Yeah. And then and you then, also have, oh, then you have yeah, Madison it, also Alex. in, you know, uh, center attacking midfield. Yeah. You so. go, you're going you're to try and walk out Tillemans and Pratt at, at the same time, and Madi- or slash Madison. That's going to be, uh, that's the kind of team that we really want at the end of the day. The team that they're going to go, what are they going to put out? We don't even know. So, what yeah. the hell is going to happen? Yeah, and I, th- I think the only downside is what West Ham did yesterday. West Ham knew where how we were going to attack, where we were going to attack, and they just shut us down and then just gave the ball to Antonio, who absolutely destroyed our defence. Um, so the counter-attack is going to be one of the things that we need to be wary of. But I, I think with Ndidi there, being a bit deeper than Mendy probably plays, that will help us considerably um, because he's the one that always stops everything because... He does sit a little bit deeper than Mendy Mendy plays. And that, I think, gives the defence a little bit more protection. He's out, though. We can't even think of that until 2021. Um, So going on to the last one that we've brought in so far, Kenge's Undere. Neil, um, I know you didn't see the game. Uh, What are your views on him joining us? So from what I heard, it's quite positive. It's exactly the sign that we were looking to have on that right-hand side slash left-hand side, you were saying they were overlapping with Barnes, a change with Barnes as well. So I'm really happy. Obviously, there's going to be a massive target on his head because Riyad Mahrez, as the fans know, we've been lacking a Riyad Mahrez type. He looks like the next understudy to that. So we'll give him time, give him the ability, see how well he does the end of the season. Hopefully him and Barnes can pop up with a few goals. But yeah, I'm really excited and it was the right move. I think we've been tracking him for a while as well. So it's looking good, I think. Alex, I know you saw the game yesterday. What were your first views on him? I liked his play. Um, You know, I don't think he really had the opportunity that uh, everyone was expecting him to have. Um, He kind of came into a game that was, you know, they were already down 
And, um, you know, I think he did everything in his power to try to make an impression and try to leave a mark on the game. Um, now, like I said, he, he didn't start the game. He came on as a sub. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for him. And I think moving forward, I think we're going to, you know, when he gets to train more with the club uh, and first team, um, I'm, I'm glad that we actually have a winger, like an actual winger rather than having Perez play on the wing because that didn't work out at all. Um, Perez hasn't worked out at all, but that's a different story. Um, but I think under is, you know, I think he's, he's a good player to have, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he'll do this season, especially with how we've, um, we've gotten him has been great because he's, he's here on loan with the option to buy, which I think is great. So if he proves to be, you know, a great player, we, we can, you know, buy him. Um, and if he's not the player that we expected or, you know, he disappoints us, you know, that's, that's the end of it. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's, it's going to be kind of a, you know, interesting take on what's going to happen this year. And I think, you know, he, um, the way I kind of view it is how uh, Tillman's when he came here on loan, you know, it was kind of like a try before you buy. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. And um, my first views are, he seems really exciting. I was really impressed with his confidence as well. First game, probably not trained much due to his international permit. Um, just came in and just seemed like he'd been playing with the team quite a while. Um, was interchanging quite well. And I was really, really impressed with him. Um, his confidence was there. Uh, yes, he had a silly dive. But if you ever see if you ever see Roma play, then that's basically what they do every single game. So that's probably what he's caught up in training. And, and I think they'll get it out of him. Um I don't, I don't think he's on Riyad Mahrez's level. I know all the Leicester fans will hope he is, but I don't think currently he's not. But he might get there. I'm not sure. But I was really, really impressed with his play. Um, he'd go inside, he'd go outside. Um, and, and I just thought he just looked so good um, compared with Perez that was there at the start. He hasn't got the confidence to take anyone on. He always seems to cut inside and pull it back to Tillemans or pull it back to somebody else like Mendy. Um, and, and we saw yesterday, he only made one successful pass forward because of most of his passes are backwards. Um, whereas Undo did quite a few passes forward, taking people on. And he just seemed, I know no one was there, but if we'd have been there, Neil, it, was really, it would really, really excite the crowd. Yeah, that made me sneeze. Um, so, so to me, I, th I think I think he's going to do well. Um, and like you say, e even if he doesn't, um, then we can just send him back. Um, but if he does well, do well, I think I think what we've got to remember as well is that when we were playing the four four two with Mares, all the emphasis was on him for the attack. Yeah. So Danny Simpson would stay back and go, look, I'll deal with the defensive side. I've not got the pace, but I'll deal with two people. You go and do your thing. Yeah. So the emphasis was a lot more on Mares to be, be able to perform. Now, yeah. with Under, you've got Ricardo or um, Castagna that's going to overlap. So what that means is that the emphasis isn't always going to be on him. And if we're playing three at the back slash three in the, and three in the middle, we, could, we have the option of going to either side. Before, when we used to go to Mares, it was a very, very similar play. We'd get the ball, pass it to midfield. Midfield, the, probably Danny Drinkwater would then give it to a Mares. Mares would do his tricky work, maybe pass it, maybe shoot. So we've got different ways of playing and different tactics now. So I don't think we need somebody that's to the level of Mares because of the overlapping wingers in what, what they give you compared to Fuchs and Simpson now, which you've got Castagna yeah. and Ricardo slash Justin. Yeah, as you know, Leicester fans always want to replace someone with someone else. <laughs> yeah. every, every team does. It's not just us, but I totally get what you mean. Um, so looking at the outs, I won't go for all of them because uh, we'll be here all day. Uh, so Calvin Bass has gone to Rangers on a free transfer. Uh, Daniel Everson um, has obviously gone to our sister club on loan. Um, I thought it was a strange one because I've heard really, really good things about him, how he's probably going to be our next number one at some point. Um, so it's probably good that he's gone on loan to get some experience, but I always thought he might be number two ahead of Ward, um, but it seems not. I don't know what you two think. I think he's still young. I'm not too sure about him. I've, I've heard great things from Oldham when he was there last season. But overall, I can't really tell you too much about him, to be honest. But, I mean, we've got time. We've got people that are going to be in that position. So, 
I'm, I'm more than happy to just sit, send to another club. Belgium second division or first division is probably not the best, yeah. but experience is experience at the end of the day. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Darnell Johnson's gone to Wigan. Um, that was quite a surprise to me. I thought they'd keep him and, and try and get him to play some games this season uh, with all the cup competitions and leagues. So that was a strange one. That, obviously, he's gone for first team football, but it just seemed a strange one to me. I think we I believe he's only gone until uh, January of 2021. Oh, okay. So I think it's only yeah. a six month uh, trans uh, alone. So um, I think it's maybe just get some play time and uh, bring him back for the uh, second half of the season. And, uh, you know, if he produces well over in Wigan, then, you know, you see what he can do here. Yeah, because Matt Piper as well, he knows his dad and stuff quite well. And I think he said he's ready for the Premier League, but maybe this is just the kind of boost because at the time, the games are going to come massively from January to March to May because of the World Cup and what have you not. So I think that's probably the opportunity. And if you're saying he's going to be a three-month thing, it makes perfect sense, in my opinion. And then he'll be ready for the Europa League if we need him. Yep. Uh, Gazelle's gone to Besiktas on loan. Um, seems, like, seems a good one to me. Gets 50% of his wages off the wage bill for a season. That could only be good. He's, he, he's never going to be in Rogers' plans, is it? Let's be honest. Yeah, he was a, he was a he was a Puel buy, and it, it it didn't work out. That's fine. Hopefully, he's gone and wish him all the best. But I think his contract expires soon anyway. So, again, more the off the wage bill, especially with COVID, the better we can do. Yep, totally agree. Uh, ben Chilwell played his first game of the weekend. Um, we've already discussed this offline. It just seems a Ben Chilwell of old. One assist, one goal. Um, played okay, fair play to him, moved to a different club. I'm not really bothered what he does, if I'm honest. Alex? Yeah. I, mean, I will say he'll probably score against us because all our ex-players do, don't they? Yeah, sounds good. Um, one I wanted to talk about was, um, obviously, silver has gone to Sampdori on a two-year deal. Um, we've decided to end his nightmare. Um, which I think is probably a good thing because he just, ever since that move was how many seconds late, ever since then, it, it seemed to have gone downhill. Um, he, uh, he, didn't, he seemed okay playing. I'm just not sure why he hadn't played as much as he had played. Um, but for me, it's a good, just end his nightmare and get him out of the club and off the wage list because I think he was on 80-odd grand a week as well, wasn't he? It's just what we needed, to be honest. Um, I think... It, it, it didn't work out. We're sorry for him. We wish him all the best. I remember seeing him at Huddersfield and he was getting a ole every time he touched the ball and people were cheering. But it, it's just one of the things that didn't work out. And I don't think he's built physically for the Premier League and he's not got the quite men mentality. So I think the Italian league will actually suit him quite well. Yeah. You know, ever since he even showed up, it just, it just hasn't worked out for him here. Um, and it's, you know, him staying here is, hasn't worked well for him or for the club. So, you know, it's, I think it's good for both sides. You know, it gives us the, uh, clears up some space for the, uh, for our wage bill uh, and for him, he can move forward with his career. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's talk of Slomani going, I, I know he was supposed to be going to West Brom, but that broke down because of his wage demands as per usual. Um, so <coughs> it, it just seems, I think he'll go, but it, it probably will go tomorrow in Portugal's transfer window. But if he doesn't go, then he's just going to, have to see out his contract. I don't think we'll ever get rid of him otherwise. No, he's uh, <coughs> he's being paid way too much. Um, and like I said, you're not going to sell him to anyone. Um, so if he doesn't go tomorrow, um, I think he'll be sitting on the bench or not obviously on the bench. Sorry, he won't even be dressed and playing for the entire season. He just knows he can't get the wages anywhere else, so he might as well just say and go on loan and. He knows his career is coming not to an end, but it's coming down slowly, slowly. So take the 80 grand while you could. And I, I don't blame him because I'd probably do the same in his position. It must be tough getting paid 80 grand a week for 52 weeks a year to not do anything. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so so, so what, one that has surprised me is that Gray's not gone anywhere. On social media, he said he wanted to get freedom, um, he's, he's not he's not been quiet about it. he wants to leave um, I don't think he's in Roger's plans 
every time he plays, he looks disinterested, and I've not seen him have a good game in ages. I'm just really surprised that he's not gone anywhere. Nobody's come in for him. That's 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 the thing. If if you're gonna if you're gonna you if you want to look like you're moving, like the Arsenal game. He should have put in an unbelievable performance to the point where we go, actually, we need to keep him. But he didn't. He was pro- pro- possibly the worst player on the pitch um, because he just missed everything. He tried to take everything on himself and his mentality is not in there. I, I don't. I understand why other clubs haven't come in from because at the end of the day, what are, we, what are they going to get out of him? What have they seen out of him? Because we're more than willing to give a player time to develop. We've given him four years, and I think we were, we've mentioned this multiple times now, where Ian Nacho, Barnes, Chilwell, um, now you're looking at Suyuncu as well. All these players have come in before, up their game and passed him. Obviously, there are different positions, but we're more than willing to give a player time. And Rogers has probably said to you, this is what you need. Remember at the beginning of last season, he goes, I've dropped him. He needs to work on his stuff. And then he'll, he'll be put back in the team. We had a couple, a couple of good performances, started the game, didn't work properly, and it didn't really work out for him. So Roger's gone, well, we've given the opportunity. You've had your chance to work on it, and you haven't. So now you've just got to sit, not even on the bench anymore. So I think it's his own fault at the end of the day, but that mentality just isn't going to work at other clubs. So that's probably the reason, not because he's not talented, because there's definitely a talented player in there, especially when we brought him in 2016. But now it just seems like, this is his own fate now. So it, I don't blame other clubs for not coming in because he'll probably have to jump, jump down to the championship once again. I think, I think sorry, I was going to say, this is just my opinion. I think he needs to go on loan to the championship and he has got the talent in the championship to tear it up, to, to get mm-hmm. goals, to get assists and build his confidence back up um, and give him them that game time that he desperately needs. Um Sometimes when I see him play, he just doesn't look confident anymore. Um, when he, when he was, sometimes when he was playing, he scored that wonder goal against Man United, I remember. His confidence was so high that game. The last time I saw him play, he just looked like a shell of a player he used to be. Um, and, and, and like Neil says, he's just not improving. Um, and, and we've had this discussion many, many times on, on, on our podcast around his decision-making is terrible. Yeah. 100%. He's got people square to him. He doesn't pass. He goes for Hollywood goals all the time to try and make a name for himself, where his coaches are probably telling him, look up, pass square, pass back, pick the right option. But he, he's not doing so. I think I'm with you, Neil. If he, if he goes anywhere, it'll probably be the championship because um, he's not going to get in anybody else's first team in the Premier League constantly with the, with the current way he's playing. I think what... one issue... Sorry, Alex, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, you know, if clubs look for players that produce, you know, Mm -hmm. when you're not producing or trying for that matter, no one's going to be interested in you. So, you know, if he wants to play somewhere else or get the freedom to play, he's got to put in the effort. Because if he doesn't put in the effort, he's going to be, you know, he won't even make the team. You know, he'll be sitting at home watching the game because, you know, he doesn't put in the effort to actually try. No, I totally agree. I think one of the things that we saw glimpses, glimpses of brilliance last season, I remember the Sheffield game where he came on as a substitute, looked great. The game against Crystal Palace with that amazing build-up goal with him and Vardy was just spectacular. And we're thinking, great, finally we've got somebody off the bench that we're going to use. And it just, it, the, the glimpses are there and we thought he's got his head sorted, but Maybe he's just too, too comfortable now. Maybe he's just like, I'm on this money. I'm not going to get in the team out oh, well. But I think his contract ends in maybe a couple of years or so. So we're just going to have to, basically, he'll be the person that we kind of send on loan if anybody wants him. But I'm, again, James, I'm surprised that nobody's taken him. But the championship will probably, as you said, probably be the best place for him. Yeah, I actually think he's in the last year of his contract. Mm. So that's another thing. Maybe I even believe that they can watch the games together. <laughs> um, so that's it for transfers. I've just had a quick look on Sky Sports Transfer Centre. I can't see any rumours about any incomings or outgoings for us at the minute. Um, obviously, the transfer window is open for another two hours, but I don't expect much business from us. We forgot Diabate as well. Ah, yes, diabate has gone... Uh, the um, other Turkish trans—I uh, can't remember now. Transport or something—I can't okay. remember the name. 
But he's, he's gone to a Turkish side. Is he on loan or been sold? No, he's been sold permanently. Okay. okay. Get yeah, it done. Well, that's good as well. Gets him off the wage bill. And again, he's not in Rogers' plans. So, yeah. He, he was a strange buy. I think he was. Did Claude Perel buy him because Claude Perel's son used to play football with him or something ridiculous like that? Yeah, but he looked decent. I remember, we were, was it Peterborough we were playing against? He got two goals and assist in his first game. I was like, this could be onto something here. But I've I've definitely I've been I'll, I've been guilty of doing that so many times with like Jeff Schlupp, uh, Joe Dodu. Uh, yeah. If not in the plans, not in the plans, and obviously the club know better than I do. Yeah, I think you're right. I think um, so they're the transfers. So, so what do you guys think to the Premier League squad? Because obviously the Premier League squad's different to the Europe squad. So let's have a quick look at the Premier League squad. Is it enough? Is it a big enough squad with the right depth to do well in the Premier League? Yes, I think so. If we can stay injury prone, injury because the issue is with as well with the injuries is that we lost in Diddy. That was a big one. Um, he was he was one that I wasn't too sure what was going to happen. But if we can keep this squad ready, then I sh- we should be okay. I think with the way Premier League is going, we need to concentrate on that, ignore the majority of what's happening in the Europa League and just play kind of a less good team now that that's been announced as well. So for the most part, I'm just happy with the squad that we have. Again, we've got strength and depth more than we have ever before. We've built up slowly, slowly with like under coming in with certain players that have like um, Castagna coming in was a great addition in my opinion as well so with the squad that we have it's it could be deeper uh, but I think it's all right for now we if we lose injuries especially somebody like a Vardy or a or a Schmeichel then we are looking a bit light that's the only issue that I think at the moment but for the most part I'm happy with it but if you're trying to extend that to Europa League as well that's when I think the tension is going to be uh, the squad's going to be really really stretched Okay. Alex, what do you think? What we've managed to do with the pandemic happening this season and this year, I think, you know, what we've managed to do has been, you know, impressive to say the least. And that's, that might just be my opinion on this. Um, I definitely agree with Neil on the uh, injury front. Um, we lose a player here and there. Um, you know, if we definitely lose Vardy, you know, is Nacho going to be, Nacho is going to be our starting uh, striker. Um but we don't have uh, anyone to back him. Do we bring Salmani in? No, because Rogers had already said that he's not in the plans. So there's this, as long as we can avoid more injuries, I think we'll be fine. But if we get injured, get more injuries, you know, that, that changes the dynamics of everything. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think um, so Premier League's 25 players. I think if we just go for the Premier League, I think that squad's probably good enough to be top six, if I'm honest. Um, Europa League Europa League's probably the one that worries me again it's a 25 man squad however you have to have 8 homegrown players because of the UEFA ruling um, so if you start to get injuries um, and obviously we've lost Chilwell as another homegrown <coughs> if Gray had gone he'd have been another one um, so you, you, your squad for that seems to get less and less but as we discussed before I'm not sure Europa's our priority fans can't go so is it a priority? <coughs> Sorry. And there's no financial um, benefit either as well. It's more just for the kind of benefit of of the club, really. Say we've done well in Europe because... But at the end of the day, there isn't that much money compared to Champions League. So I don't see the club going out and spending the big money unless we get Champions League next year. All right, so we've discussed transfers. Um, so we're all back next week. Um, Alex, hopefully, with, with us with some sound. Neil will be with us. Um, hopefully, Ant will be back as well. Uh, we're discussing the Villa game coming up in two weeks' time. Um, so we'll do a bit of a preview show for that. Um, so thanks, Alex. I won't I won't make you talk. Uh, thanks again, Neil. See you later, James. See you later, everybody. Thank you. Bye.